Hello everyone, hope you're enjoying the bank holiday weekend as much as possible. Eid Mubarak to all our Muslim followers as well. Thank you very much for the kind comments on last Sunday's video. Uh, I'm loving the interaction as well in the comment section, so please keep that coming. I've got a, a list of uh, a couple of the questions in there that we'll go through in this video as well. So if you have any uh, points or questions that you want to have addressed in next Sunday's video, get them in the, the comment section uh, and I will address those in seven days time. Uh, also, one thing I want to do in this video is talk about the, the Amplify trading process. Uh, so I'm sure many of you are aware now we have our Amplify Now online course uh, where you can learn about uh, you know the fundamentals of the way we looked at the market, the technical side of things, the psychology. But what I'm going to focus here, and it's part of the, uh, the skill set that you'll learn on Amplify Now, is the trading process. So um, obviously you can, you can click start now and there's a, a free week trial for you to get stuck in. Uh, but one of the main things that we do in the week long intensive course and the, the five week uh, professional trading program course is following this process. So uh, we start with that fundamental analysis. So like I said last week, I'm looking out for Ant's macro menu, building that picture and then doing the technical stuff, which is what we'll go through here building a strategy, executing that strategy, obviously exiting the trade, reviewing and, and going uh, again. So I actually haven't looked at the market since Friday's close. I haven't done any preparation for, for the charts whatsoever. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that was to go through it live as if, well, it is the first time uh, that I've seen the market. So you can really see the process uh, that I go through and our traders here at Amplify go through as well. So. I've got rid of all the tabs that were uh, here from from last Sunday um, and obviously removed some of the analysis well all the analysis that was on the euro here but you know let's have a let's have a little look through the way I'd be looking uh, at this and obviously I'm involved in the markets all the time so I can remember where trend lines were or when levels broke but it's you know no harm whatsoever in just refreshing the charts taking everything off going back to those longer time frames also worth noting you know what is it this week well you know the the last trading day of the month is next friday so have we got a bit of end of month fighters in the fx space or in the equity markets to to consider uh, but yeah let's move back on to yeah the euro you know we were saying this time last week weren't we about the uh, the trend line how you know if that goes really opens the floor and i agree absolutely but we couldn't go lower unless that trend line broke and you can still you can see how well that held and you know i was also saying it's a long if we can get above here we did came back test it and then to the top of that range a lot of fx pairs did the is, did that sort of pattern where it pushed higher into the back end of the week and then had a couple of days just drifting off those lows so for, for euro here interestingly you know where it finished is bang on the level we broke through on the, what was the 18th on, on Monday we came back to test it importantly on the futures we finished above so the way I'd be you know looking at this and obviously bear in mind tomorrow is you know a bank holiday uh, in well in the UK some parts of Europe and America as well so volume is going to be low would I hold off trading tomorrow potentially uh, but having a look at the euro here, you can see, you know, the way I'm looking at this is, uh, and I'll probably, because I'm probably not, I'm not going to trade tomorrow. I will look at the markets, but I'll, you know, be looking, you know, Monday night to see. And, you know, if we hold here, then, you know, I'd be bullish this market that we can have another go at potentially pushing back up to this top of the range here. If we come back below, then we can get excited again about that trend line. I mean, there's obviously a, quite important level here which was the two Fridays ago high what's that 108.55 on, on the futures that I would consider uh, as a bit of support but below the 109 handle I'd say we are likely to drift down to the trend line and then we've got to be aware of those levels below yes you're marking up this low which is also uh, previous area of support as well da -da -da, they're your targets if we hold and we go above the range where could we go to or how about the top end of you know the, the 1st of April above that looking at the 
the handle and then suddenly you're up towards here. So it's a really interesting market for Euro. Good opportunities last week on the break of you know, this resistance, then this and the, the, the retest or the short from up there. For me, Euro last week was a beautiful market to trade. Now going back to that, that process we're looking at here, the fundamentals, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Anthony says in that macro menu. I'll post the link in the, the chat section once uh, that is updated. But I want to see, is there any developments? Uh, what data do we have out? And then I can build that in with the, the, the technical side. You know, if I feel the fundamentals are leading, you know, to more to a more bearish outlook, okay, well, let's get a confirmation of the break below 109. And then I can target down to here, the risk reward stop just above. You know, when's the right time of the day to take that on uh, as well? One of the questions uh, last week was talking about correlation. So what would I want to see for this market to move lower? Dollar strength across the board. I'll be looking at the dollar index. Is it breaking new highs? Is the pound also under pressure? What's Aussie dollar doing? What is gold doing? Uh, if it's a dollar related move, I'd expect all these markets to be pushing towards their lows when I'm looking for euro to also do the same. Uh, perhaps as well. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. What are those correlated markets? Are there any key levels in? Uh, I mean, a great correlation uh, has been just the NASDAQ and its drag on other equity markets. So we'll come on to that uh, a bit later uh, as well. Um, another question was just about some extra analysis on the, on the markets. Is, you know, is this how you leave it? And to be honest, a lot of the time it is. You know, here I've now got all my levels marked up. If we go above the range, I now know where I'll be looking to target. If we uh, don't hold here, looking at the trend line, I've got those targets in play. And you know, obviously I can uh, uh, flick of the wrist, go back to you know 2017 and start thinking about, okay, well that would be the next level. Do I add anything else? Well, for example, I'm just gonna bang on the, the S&P here. You know, what what's probably the most common you know, daily moving average, certainly in the equity space, is the 200 days. So this is, you know, where I'd have that on because we're near. So if we go back to the euro, I want to see, well, are there any fibs in play? Are we, you know, holding on any key moving averages? You know, one that uh, a lot of people will look at on the daily as well as the 100 day moving average. So let's just have a quick look. Like I said, this is the first time I've looked at the markets since Friday evening. 100 day moving average, you know, look at that. Couldn't get above it. Resistance, important. So then, therefore I'm gonna have it on uh, if we were to push up again, just so I can be aware um, as well. Let's have a quick look over at the, the pound. Um, we were talking last Sunday, when was, so let's get Sunday, it was looking, looking like this. Um, and we were saying, look, we've got to be bearish uh, and the, the sellers will be in control as long as our zone here holds. So let's just get that zone on. You know, people will be looking for that retest. We came back into it, couldn't close above it a couple of times. I know personally quite a few people that took that short on, on the 19th, on the Tuesday. Yeah, a bit hairy on the on the Wednesday, but good, good level really, isn't it? You know, it's... Uh, you know, pushed higher on the Monday because there was a risk on across the market and, and the pound has been very sensitive to that. We also had some data out on, uh, would have been the Wednesday morning. So the Tuesday we pushed above and I was happy to almost get long. And then we had that, the end of day trade conversation with our traders and Amber saying how the data was out at 7am and obviously I had to backtrack off that can't take that trade on. If the data comes out a lot better, then fine. Let's look for the longs if we close above. We didn't, uh, and we've come back lower. So for the pound this week, I think you've still got to be bearish. Uh, however, you've got the the coming situation going on at the moment. And I've seen a bit of chatter about if he is to, to go, uh, it actually could be a bit of a pound positive due to his stance on Brexit. Let's see how that unfolds over the, the course of the of the day really but yeah at the moment technically I'm, I'm happy to be be short the pound uh, if I wasn't you know I'm not in a trade so if I was short I'd be happy to still be short bit of support here yes it's been choppy but it's worth keeping an eye on we also closed below there the low from the last week uh, be looking for for that to come in and then you've got some key support just below there and also the 120 
handle as well and then be looking down towards these lows. I do like the idea of a pound long. Um, I'm only going to get in technically when that uh, does arise and it's uh, it's about for me getting the getting the, the confirmation from the chart. So a close above here, nice retest and, and looking for uh, us to push on towards the, the double top that we can see here similar to maybe the move that we got in the euro however at the moment chart is telling me it's a short um if there uh, is a change in that for me that comes in above 122.65 on the futures so that's how i would be be keeping an eye on that obviously a few places to de-risk as we go above 100 day moving average on the euro good 100 day moving average on uh, the pound not worth having on for me, right click, remove that, uh, and we move on. Correlations here, obviously we've got the dollar side of things. We'll be looking at the pound on other pairs, euro pound, for example. We'll be looking at the FTSE as well. If we start seeing some pound weakness, is that going to help push FTSE higher? Or is it due to a risk off move and, and both of those can move down uh, together? So understanding the correlations is obviously key. Um, and one thing we do focus a lot here uh, at Amplify. Moving on cautious that we're over 10 minutes so I will like last week's video I'm going to put the timestamps in the comment section for you so you can go to the market of choice if you don't want to listen to me rambling on for, for the whole thing uh, but yeah let's, let's, let's go Aussie dollar I quite like the Aussie to be honest and, and I remember this time last week we were putting on the, the trend line from the lows saying look a lot of people bearish uh, the Aussie can't understand why it's this higher Fine, sell it under the trend line. Doesn't come up to it, hit the top of the range. Bit choppy on that range, but you could argue we actually just hit the high of the 10th of March instead of those previous highs. So I'm now marking that up. I'd still have this trend line on. I'd also have this resistance from what was first uh, Friday. We broke through that, obviously on the Monday, key level support. So this whole area here circled up. Bulls are in control of that for me, which means what an opportunity if that goes, if that breaks through, okay, let's de-risk off some on these lows here, uh, and then really down to where this whole trend line sort of begins. So good opportunity there on the break. Uh, if equities decide to have another another positive week, I think we finished up three and a bit percent, uh, certainly in the S&P anyway, uh, then th this market could push on. And then you start to really think about, you know, the next level here from the flash crash uh, on the 9th. That would be a, a point to consider as well. Uh, and then obviously those previous highs here, which you could you can mark up uh, as well. So, you know, let's have a, a quick look over those currencies here. Euro pushed higher, failure to, to break the trend line, bit of a short squeeze. The pound still weighed on by some Brexit talks, bit of risk in the market, uh, came back lower, but had to spend two, three days uh, pushing to the upside before we did actually come down. If I just quickly put this onto a week, it was an up week last week for the pound against the dollar. Uh, Aussie very correlates to the S&P, so just bear that in mind at the moment. Um, however, we have just hit a high, people take profit, comes back lower. Trend line, something I wanna wanna have on here, focusing on obviously a daily close below there for, the, for, for it to be bearish. I don't mind right now considering a long from there because my view is that uh, stocks are going to continue to to go higher so I think the Aussie could could follow suit. I'm um, going to leave it there for the currencies obviously um, another question was you know do I look at other currency pairs absolutely absolutely I know Aussie yen has been a great one uh, of focus for for me for well a couple of years really since the trade talk started uh, going uh, off uh, came into focus that's been one euro pound I like having a look at as well and uh, one of the things I actually do in the morning as well uh, is have a look at all the I've got a list of about 20 different um, currency pairs and I have a look at them and you know do the same process here to see if there is anything of interest for me um, and, and go about it that way uh, let's move on to well, let's have a look at S&P considering we're talking about the Aussie uh, finished on the high of Friday, on Friday, so near the near near enough where it, its highest trading point was. It's still range bound. I, I, I tweeted, I think it was in the, the middle to back end of last week. It, it is range bound, but it's at the top of the range, 
Um, while I'm confident that we push higher, and I am currently long near the the lower level here, um, I can't I can't add to this unless we get above that area, unless we get above our 200 day moving average. People still talking about the the six point. One second, let me just get this 200 day moving average on. People still talking about the fib level. Let me just get rid of that X. Now the 6.18, or the 0.618, I should say. For me, that's no interest now. I'm not, not having that. I think it's too choppy around that level, so I'd move it. So this is how I'd set it up. Range bound, above, we're bullish. You know, if that holds, we get a little false break, then yeah, bearish. Um, I would consider adding if we came back to test around 28.90. Uh, we'll lower the time frame down in a moment. Just this area here, really nicely respected, nicely broke through here, came back. We haven't quite retested that level. Have I missed the opportunity on Friday AM? I don't think so. I don't think so. So I would consider adding around here for, for a long. However, I would just bear in mind, and I've been saying this to the guys on the, the, the professional program, just you can see when we hit the top of these ranges, there hasn't been you know, your straightaway pullback to get long. You can see it's hit that and come back down. So I just bear that in mind. I, I think for me, it would be prudent to, to wait to see how it reacts, almost get a false break to then come back to, to look for those longs. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish, uh, I'm bearish below 28.90. So if we get a close below here, I'm bearish, and I actually think we would come back down to here, which is where below here, then I'm worried um, for the equity market that we can push lower. I just don't see it happening personally. However, you know, what's, uh, what's been quite common in, in, the, in the markets over the, the last week was a lot of China, uh, and U.S. trade rhetoric, and, um, you know, Hu Jin and, and and Trump going at it as usual, but uh, it seems to be top top headline uh, at the moment. So bearing that in mind, uh, it'll be again interesting to see what Anthony says, so I can build that fundamental picture. I've got my technical view uh, of where I want to get long or short, and you know where those targets would be, what the risk reward would be. And when would the right time of the day be or week, day of the week to take that? Is it going to be Monday looking for that big push, low volume? Unlikely. Uh, unlikely to be. Uh, moving on, uh, obviously focus here on the NASDAQ, but again, talking about that correlation. You know, one of the comments in the chat, I mean, look how good this was. This is insane how fantastically well technical the nurse that was hits your, your gap field to the tick hits the next level of importance to, to the tick we come back uh, and the failure to close back below uh, our previous high here is pretty key the failure here to close below that high is, is pretty key bullish finish for me on the on the friday um and could be all-time highs this time next week we could be looking at all-time all highs in the nasdaq to be honest uh, when is that view wrong? I would say, well, obviously it's wrong this time next Sunday if we don't, but when would I be bearish on this market? And for me, it's below it's below the 15th of, of, of May high. So this kind of area here is where I would say I'd be a bit worried for, for longs for a while and, and we can drift lower. The NASDAQ for me has just been following the same pattern since the beginning of April. Push, retrace, push retrace push retrace push now if that breaks and we, we do push lower and then you start getting people looking at trend lines and all of these kind of things then we get a break of that and suddenly you're below nine thousand you're testing here the, the lower the 14th and, and things get ugly if that doesn't happen i think we have to push up and a break of the high of last week i'd expect the 200 day moving average in the s p to also go i'd also expect to break out the range in the dow you can see range how's that not a range bound market right now we're hitting quality support impressive resistance you've got a nice midpoint in here so bullish above 
bearish below and then on the lines here bears in control bulls in control above bulls in control the low and bears that lovely trending market there uh range bound market on the dow to get a trend is it going to come on the monday on the low volume probably not into the back end of the week can we get a push above i'll be looking at the nasdaq to maybe give us uh the the queue there uh, as well have a quick look over, we'll have a quick look over gold and oil uh just to wrap things i know i don't want to make this a, a massively long video for you guys um i appreciate you know you've probably got better things to do on a sunday um but let's just have a quick look over at gold for, for me i actually am long gold um i got in thursday evening as we came back down to test 21 yeah thursday evening we came back down to test this area here um with with stops just below i think there's not there was a i took it on the spot market so it looks slightly different but basically stops below this trend line here um and using this area support so i'm, I'm long um i'm excited if it gets above 1743 um i um, would also de-risk as we maybe approach these highs up towards here and then you're looking at the high of the year on the futures. Uh, stop is, is below the trend line if that goes. Gold for me comes under a bit of pressure. 17 handle and then obviously these points on the trend line uh, as well. We had a good push a couple of Thursdays ago. Uh, we came back lower. Uh, on the Monday, stocks are pushing higher. Gold for me a bit confused last week because you had some dollar strength when we came lower. We had some risk off and dollar strength and it went higher it's i don't know it's a bit confused but we came back down to a nice uh, area of support where the buyers have, have been in control uh, previously taken over from the sellers so this coupled with a bit of the trend line uh, good enough area to get long below there i'm i'm not as interested in i think we push push down it seems a lot of people are bullish in medium term gold it's the right scenario for me to be long gold however above that trend line yes below not so much uh, oil just to wrap things uh, as, as I say whenever I look at oil you know I'm not um, I'm not an oil master um, you know I don't really trade it too often um, for me I, 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 I think we get to that 40 I do um, I think it's a matter of time and we had a, a decent enough week last week you can see we, we pushed high higher and um, when when would I feel if I was long that that is 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 wrong below thirty bucks, below twenty nine eleven. Um, also, there's been you know gradual grind higher, no trend line as such of yet, but probably worth looking into that decent push through uh, to last week. We also hit some you know resistance from from the ninth. Yeah, I I, I think we go higher, uh, but I'll leave really the the oil to to the pros the you know so it's a great market i know people trade it but they really focus on it and it's one where you need to in my opinion if you're going to trade oil know a lot about it and how it moves and and whatnot so another question here was the characteristics of each market something we go through obviously at amplify um on the on the courses you know what times are best to trade you know when looking for momentum uh, strategies you know what candle close is is good in right in what time frame uh, which markets are more technical which zone sizes are bigger you know all of these things we, we go through uh, on the course but yeah in, in summary for this video you know the the thing I want to you know teach you guys or go through with you guys is we we start with the fundamentals so ants macro menu your own research then you know where does this fit in with the technical view let's just go back to the euro and say it's super bearish news over uh, the weekend well we can't sell straight away unless we get below this technical level because if we go back to last sunday super bearish whatever imagine you sell on the open sunday evening and it pushes that high on the monday and goes through so trade what you see not what you think have that fundamental view but when are you technically right when is the rest of the market agreeing with you then building that strategy your risk reward your uh, your levels you're choosing for your entry exit stop executing but when is the right time to execute that uh, and obviously exiting and reviewing that trade which are 
uh, all important to do. But yeah, guys, I'm, I'm going to wrap it there. Uh, but please, any questions, do, do put them in the chat. If you want me to cover something else in a bit more detail, uh, I can do uh, as well. So just please do uh, let me know. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, hopefully you've all got uh, a nice day off tomorrow as well and the sun is shining where you are but i look forward to, to catching up with you in the chat uh, and also this time next week so take care guys uh, and i'll speak to you all very soon